Hey everyone, if you want to make your own podcast but you don't know where to begin, Spotify for Podcasters makes it super easy. They've got everything in one place, it's totally free, and you can make money while doing it. Here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start doing it today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and pretty much everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also supported, and you can even conduct polls and Q&As. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, the platform is totally free. No catch, totally free. When I wanted to start my own podcast, I did not know where to begin, and I didn't think it was even possible. And Spotify for Podcasters made it happen. They made it easy. They made it quick. And I am doing something that I love. What more can I ask for? So if you're interested in starting your own show, you can do it. And I highly recommend you give this a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Hey, everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Everything Kratom, the podcast about anything. And everything. Kratom. Great to have you with us on this Monday morning, hoping all is well with you. Today, I wanted to talk about something that kind of was sparked from an article that I read the other day. This was in the Island Now news, and it's kind of like a, I think the Island Now is like six different newspapers that are based in the Long Island region. So, you know, one of those local news outlets. And the article is called Kratom Dosage Guide. What's the ideal Kratom dose for everyone? (laughs) And it just kind of cracked me up because just looking at that alone, I was like, I mean, from what I can tell, the serving size of Kratom that works for one person definitely won't work for the next person. And it's not going to work for the next person. And that amount won't work for that person. Like everybody's so different and what they're using it for is different. It did start to get into that as I went through it. I'm just going to briefly touch on some things in this article, but really I wanted to talk today about this idea of like the, the, the ideal amount of Kratom, like, and if it's even a thing, how much merit there is to that. And also getting to the crux of the article, looking at what it says is the correct amount of Kratom to take for different reasons and, you know, kind of just pulling that apart a bit. I mean, I always enjoy reading what others think is the right amount of Kratom for everyone, or at least like showing average amounts that are okay for everyone or make sense. It kind of puts it into perspective for me so that I kind of know where I stand with my own usage of Kratom and and helps me to see what kind of information the Kratom community is looking at or, or being shown and how that might affect what people think about Kratom. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Taking a look at this article, it comes up pretty quickly. How much Kratom should you consume? And it starts by saying that basically there isn't any single answer for this. It all depends on why you're using it, your physique, and more. And then (laughs) right afterwards it says, however, the rough estimates are that Kratom, uh, you know, the, the servings of Kratom should range from 2 to 12 grams. So, wow, that got specific quick. Um, it, it lists it out in the following way. Microdose. <laughs> Less than two grams. Low. Between two to six grams. High. Between six to eight grams. Heavy. Anything higher than eight grams. So this is a very different chart than some of the other ones that I've seen. And I've seen a lot of them at this point over the past year just researching average amounts of Kratom people should take for this and that and just in general and looking at all sorts of different websites. And this one doesn't really seem to fall on the extreme on either end. On the lower end, they're saying a microdose is less than two grams. I don't know if that's considered a microdose. I mean, but but it just, that's the whole point. It differs for every person. So I'm just going to talk about this in terms of my own experience, but just know I'm totally aware that this is, you know, I guess the whole point of this episode is to say it's kind of meaningless because it 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 definitely differs a great deal for different people. However, I think a part of that might also have to do with the plant because people are getting their, you know, their their kratom from different sources and it's being grown in different places and 
again, there's not enough research on this stuff. Who knows? Maybe, maybe certain kratom leaves that should be the same as other ones end up having more metragenine in them than others, or maybe they end up, you know, going th- through some sort of process that somehow affects the quality. And it turns out that people end up taking more of that one than the other one, even if they wouldn't otherwise. So I don't know. But anyway, all in all, I think that anyone who listens to this just has to put it up to their own experience, look at other charts out there, and then put together their own conclusion. So for me, you know, I take anywhere from like one and a half to three and a half or four grams. Four grams is the maximum serving of Kratom that I would ever take, and that's kind of on the high end for me. So based on this chart, I fall completely on the low or micro level (laughs) in terms of the amount of Kratom that I take. Of course, it then says, of course, this varies for every person. Okay, then it says, how much Kratom should I take? The most important factors are weight, desired effects, how much Kratom do you use? So in terms of the weight category, they have this breakdown. Now, I have never seen one of these before. I'm sure that they're out there. I just have not happened to cross one yet. What it is is a chart based on body weight. It does kilograms and in pounds. And the amount of Kratom, kind of like an average amount of Kratom that that person might want to take, the ideal amount, right? Because that's what this is all about, the ideal amount. So my weight, I'm eh, 158, 160. Let's call it 160. For 160, it says four to five and a half grams. So based on this chart, that's like a gram or a gram and a half over what I would ever take. And that is helpful for me in terms of framing what kind of reference points this should be in my mind, because all right, this is based on weight. They think that I'd be taking an additional one or two grams more than I will ever take. So maybe I need to take what they say and then dial it back another gram or two. So that that's that's an interesting thought. But you can look at the way that they range this out. They have it from 100 pounds to 220 pounds uh, individuals. Of course, you can kind of do the math if you weigh less or more than that. Um, but that's an average uh, range there that they have. They also have it in kilograms. Okay, keep on going. It says Kratom for pain. Now, I'm not going to get into any of the uses that they say, like any of the merits or anything, because I don't think that I can make those claims, okay? So I'm not claiming in any way that Kratom can be used for any of these things. But in this article, what they're saying is that there are three types of Kratom that works best for pain. (laughs) They're saying that it's Bali, Green John Kong, or Green Hulu. I find that fascinating because... I mean, I've heard that Bali helps with pain pretty well, but I was expecting to see some reds there, you know? Like, I'm expecting to see reds anytime someone's talking about increasing their general sense of wellness or relaxing muscles, etc., etc. I'm expecting to see a red there, so that's interesting. Then it says Kratom for opioid withdrawal. Wow, they're getting risky in this article. <laughs> if they're trying to make claims like this, like, I don't know. This is some. This is just a personal preference, you guys, but like... Starting this podcast has really made me think hard about how I relay information. And I think that it means that I end up being a little bit more on the conservative, cautious side than maybe I would be if I was, you know, just talking to someone in a casual conversation. But I think that it's important because if you're part of any sort of media, which I guess this podcast is as well, it's important to relay the information carefully, correctly, and don't don't tell anyone to do something that isn't completely backed up in every single way, shape, and form. Science, you know, endorsement otherwise. So the fact that they're writing an article and, you know, this is for different outlets in Long Island and saying, here's the Kratom you use for opioid withdrawal. That is, that's why I said that's kind of risky to me. Anyway, so I'm not going to get too much into that. But one other thing I'll point out in this section, they actually mentioned that if your goal is to stop using opioids, uh, then then what you, your goal should be is to stop using opioids and then you should quit Kratom. And that kind of caught my eye because I've always heard so many different people talking about using Kratom to, you know, come off of opioid addictions. And and then it's just kind of left there. Like, like I, I don't hear much follow-up. I don't hear much about, like, does Kratom become an issue? 
do you end up, you know, just taking Kratom indefinitely to always be staving off this this addiction that you have? Or, you know, what happens? Like, I, I never really hear that, that second half of it. Um, so I think that it, that's just kind of what that made me think of when they said your goal is first to stop using opioids and then quit Kratom. Anyway, very specific. Again, I'm not making any claims here. Okay, another thing they mention is that there should be 45-minute gaps between every time you take Kratom. That, I think, is very, very short. I mean, it lasts so long for me. I guess I've seen some people say, like, oh, you wait like an hour or so. But I just did an episode the other day about how I really don't think that, like, taking it more than once every four hours makes sense for me personally because it just like the last time that I took it, it's still working. Like I don't feel like it's just not working or doing anything anymore. And I don't want to, you know, take more because it's, it runs the risk of making me feel like I've taken too much. So that's a personal thing too. Okay. Then it says it makes this whole claim about Kratom for depression, which is just like yet another risky area (laughs) beyond risky. And it really made me realize how there's this thing about these articles that are written sometimes that drive me nuts, which is that they treat very long, complex, difficult issues in human life as something that they can answer in like two seconds and how ridiculous that is. And this article is just riddled with examples of that. They have a whole section here on Kratom helping depression through euphoria. (laughs) They're like basically saying, oh, Kratom gives you euphoria and you get flooded with dopamine so it makes you happy and you have those moments where it's like it pushes away your depression temporarily and a microdose is perfectly sufficient to deal with this and then at the very end after saying Bali Kratom and Borneo work best for doing this they end up saying remember these products are there just to help you out you shouldn't become dependent on them additionally you should seek therapy and medical advice Yeah, I mean, I would start this whole article off with that rather than like putting that as a footnote (laughs) after telling people you get euphoria from this thing and it's going to cure your depression. (laughs) Uh, They do another thing like that for anxiety, although that one's a bit more toned down. Um, You know, I guess that's kind of my takeaway from this whole thought experiment. Is there an ideal amount of Kratom to take? And then also, you know, building on that with everything in this article that's about that very question, is there an ideal scenario where you can fix certain problems about yourself through a type of Kratom at a specific amount? No, I don't think so. I think that, I think everybody's body's different, but that's not my takeaway, because if that was the takeaway, you know, there's no reason to listen to this whole podcast. (laughs) No, it's more than that. Everybody's body's different, but at the same time, the plant is the same, right? If everyone's taking the pure, unadulterated form of kratom, who's who's taking kratom, and they're taking the exact same one from the same place, like if everyone who takes kratom in the U.S. flies to Indonesia and goes and picks kratom leaves from the exact same place... And then everyone proceeds to do the exact same preparation and makes their tea or whatever. And they they have that. That's the experiment. That's the only way that you could really figure out what the ideal amount of Kratom would be. Because that way, you you have the control and everything. Like, everybody's taking the exact same Kratom. Um, You have to make sure there's, like, no pesticides used and everything. Anyway, long story short, everyone's getting the same plant. Everyone's getting the same amount, and then you see what happens. And if there's a gradient as to the effects and what those effects are based on people's weights or their ages or their heights or, you know, (laughs) whether they're a part of a book group or not, I don't care. Whatever it is, if you can find a gradient, then you have a measurement tool. That would be really, really neat. Of course, there's more factors than that. Of course, that happens in a vacuum, and of course, it will never happen, but it's fun to think about these things. So since we can't all fly to Indonesia and pick a leaf from the same Kratom plant tomorrow, (laughs) we kind of got to work with what we've got. And that's why I like to look at these sources. It's not that I think that they're right. And it's not that I think that they know what's best or that they have some sort of insight. It's just to help me have another 
piece of information to fill in the bell curve so that I can personally know eh, roughly where I fall. According to this article, I fall on the lower end. According to another article, I fall on the lower to middle end. If I find a few more that are like that, I'll know that I'm kind of like a, I'm taking a, a lower to middle amount or serving of Kratom compared to most other users, but who knows? Who knows? There's a lot there. Anyway, let's wrap it up. It's a Monday. Didn't mean to keep you this long. Let's uh, meet back here tomorrow. Same time, same place. Thanks for stopping by. You all rock, and we'll be back tomorrow. Take it easy. Bye-bye.